少，因灵寻，卡耶伊拉灵，阿萨卡哈拉灵，扎卡拉灵，少爱灵灵寻。Namaste. Well, I wasn't going to do any more of these explainer videos because I got the impression nobody was listening. But my、uh, best friend Aung Shiva, he prevailed upon me to explain a little bit about this Devi Bhagavatam. So I'm going to be doing these from time to time to clarify some of the pe people and、uh, places. And things mentioned in the text. So, first of all, what is Sri Mad Devi Bhagavatam? Well, if you have any familiarity with the Vaishnava teachings, the Vaishnavas have a book called Sri Mad Bhagavatam, and Sri Mad Devi Bhagavatam is the equivalent scripture for the Shaktas. The Shaktas are those who Uh, avoiding the pitfall of Maya,、uh, develop devotion for the Universal Mother. So they're followers and devotees of the Mother, Lalita, Ambika, Tripura Sundari. There's so many names: Shakti, Devi,、uh, and so on. And this Bhagavatam is the comprehensive、uh, statement. Of who she is and the role that she plays in universal affairs. So it's very interesting that although the Sri Mad Devi Bhagavatam is classified as an Upa Purana, a Purana means history, and Upa Purana means it's not one of the eighteen major Puranas written by Vyasadeva. But even though it's classified as an Upa Purana, in his manuscript, Vyasadev calls it the Maha Purana, the great Purana, or the greatest Purana, because he doesn't call any other of his Puranas by that name. He's written eighteen major Puranas and more minor Upa Puranas, but Devi Bhagavatam is the only one. Called Mahapurana, and this is obviously because the Divine Mother is considered the root or womb of the universe, and metaphorically, she represents consciousness. And of course, consciousness is the foundation of all reality. So, the、uh, Devi Bhagavatam. Reveals her role as the one supreme goddess. You might say, "Well, what about Shiva?" Shiva doesn't really do anything. <laughs> Shiva represents Brahman, and Brahman is pure, unconditioned awareness. So he has no activity. Really, he has no form. And. In the Lalita Sahasranam, it's revealed right in the end that Lalita or Devi is the form of Shiva. So, if Shiva appears to have any activity or any form, it's actually only because of her. This indicates how primary and how important the goddess is. So, most religionists. And certainly, the Vaishnavas fall into this category. They they fall for the Maya that the supreme has to be male. But actually, if we look at nature, huh? We call nature Mother Nature. Why? Because she gives birth to all the worlds and all the creatures, including the human beings. Without her, nothing would have any force. Shakti means force, huh? So you uh, uh, Star Wars fans out there who are worshiping the force, the Shakti, 
this female. I think that's why uh, the Star Wars pictures don't go very deep into the meaning of the Force, because the Force is female, life energy, Kundalini, Shakti, Prana, Gayatri. She is the life force and the mind force, name and form. And of course, we discussed name and form extensively in our series on the Buddha's teaching, especially Paticca Samupada. And it turns out that she is name and form as Gayatri. So anyway, the choice of words by Vyasa indicates the importance of this work. Now, who are the personalities discussed in this first chapter? Because this chapter sets the scene for the entire rest of the book. So first mentioned is Shaunaka, Shaunaka Rishi. Shaunaka Rishi is the senior most sage. In other words, he's a realized being of the assembly of the sages in the forest of Naimisharanya. Naimisharanya is a place existing today in northern India, kind of near Delhi and Agra, up in that area. And it's a place where all the sages gathered 5,000 years ago at the beginning of Kali Yuga to perform a sacrifice to delay the effects of Kali Yuga. Because if you've read Mahabharata, the uh, Battle of Kurukshetra basically wiped out all the qualified Kshatriyas, kings. So then after they were gone, all the nasty rogues and rascals took over the administration of the various kingdoms. And, you know, they're still with us today. <laughs> Just read the news. Anyway, the sages held a sacrifice of 1,000 years, the first 1,000 years of Kali Yuga. And the nature of this sacrifice was not the usual homa and so on, but it was a hearing sacrifice, shravanam, shravanam kirtanam. And so amongst the works that were read were all of Vyasadeva's books, including Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. So the Bhagavatam opens with Shaunaka Rishi, the president of the assembly, approaching Sutta Goswami. Now, who is Sutta Goswami? Well, he's the son of Roma Harshan. Roma Harshan Sutta. Sutta means a person of mixed birth. In this case, when a Kshatriya, sorry, a Brahmana male has union with a Sudra woman, then the resulting offspring is called Sutta. And uh, this is the uh, mixed birth, but is considered very auspicious because the person has both Brahmana and Sudra characteristics, enabling them to have compassion toward the common man because they also have a lot of the qualities of the common man. So anyway, Roma Harshan Sutta made a great blunder. He <clears throat> disrespected Lord Balaram during the Krishna Leela, and Balaram killed him by striking him with a blade of grass. So <laughs> Balaram is the incarnation of Ananta Shesha. So he can do whatever he likes. He can kill you with a blade of grass, or he can bless you with an atomic bomb. <laughs> so in any case, uh, Roma Harshan uh, screwed up, and but his son, Sutta, uh, became the disciple of Vyasadeva. Uh, so Vyasadeva, of course, being the divider of the Vedas, Vyas means divider, and the greatest sage. He gave Sutta a very good education, and Sutta could then recite 
from memory all the Puranas and Upa Puranas. He was the expert in that area. So he was invited to speak by Shonaka, and he spoke all these Puranas for the benefit of the sages. So Naimasharanya was the one place which was free from the influence of the age of Kali by means of this great sacrifice. All the sages were gathered there and Kali could not enter because of the power of their tapasya. So this uh, place is called uh, Vishvasan Kshetra. Kshetra means a field. And Vishvasan means a reliable place, a pure or a protective place, a shelter, a refuge where one can perform spiritual activities without disturbance. So I know you guys don't like to look up words, <laughs> but to get the real meaning, you have to use the Sanskrit dictionary and find out who these people are and these different names. So a little bit later, uh, he is addressed, Sutta is addressed as Saumya. Saumya is the uh, possessive form of the word Soma. And Soma means the moon. Soma is also the name of the sacrificial beverage, the psychedelic drug that was prepared at the ancient Vedic sacrifices. Unfortunately, we've lost the, the formula. <laughs> but anyway... Uh, Saumya means one who resembles the moon. So it's very likely that he had a moon face, a very a round face. Huh? You can still see these people in northern India and Nepal who have a round face. They're often from the tribal areas in the hills of Nepal. And so uh, Sutta, Sutta Goswami, uh, he was not only a round faced, but he, his nature was very cool and pleasing. Saumya also means uh, cool and moist, just like the moon. Uh, we just had, after the full moon, this wonderful full moon, uh, at the same time when Jupiter went from retrograde to direct, and we just had a wonderful all-night rainstorm. Beautiful rain, which we needed very badly here. So this rain, this cooling rain, is coming from Guru, Jupiter, and Soma, moon. So in the same way, the cooling rain of the Devi Bhagavata is coming from Saumya, Sutta Goswami, and uh, cooling our hearts, hopefully, if we listen well and giving us the uh, nectar that we always wanted. Um, then he mentions that there are scriptures in the three gunas. Guna means equality. See, Brahman has two aspects. Nirguna, without any qualities, that's Shiva. And Saguna, or with qualities, that's represented by Devi. So what are these qualities? Sattvic, Rajasic, and Tamasic. Sattvic means goodness. Rajasic means passion. And Tamasic means ignorance. So there are qualities, just like uh, in the population of the world, these three qualities are there in the different classifications of people. Uh, the Brahmanas, are in the cl a classification of goodness, sattvika. And the kshatriyas are in the classification of rajasic, or passion. The vaishas, the tradesmen, are in the mixed modes of passion and ignorance, rajasic and tamasic. And the shudras, which are more than 90%, or in these days 99% of the population, are in the classification of ignorance, tamasic. And the meaning of these words, the deep meaning is that the sattvic qualities lead to a higher birth in the higher planetary systems. 
heaven or even above heaven. The rajasic qualities uh, lead to suffering and rebirth as a human being where one has to accept one's karma. And the tamasic qualities and activities lead to rebirth in the animal species. So these three qualities of human beings, there are also three qualities of food, three qualities of religious activities, three qualities of work, and so on. Everything in the world is subject to these three. And if you want to know more about this subject, which you should, <laughs> because it's very useful in life, it's described in detail in Bhagavad Gita, especially chapters 13 and 14, 17 and 18. I'm not going to say more about it here. And finally, he says at the very end that this scripture, Srimad Devi Bhagavatam, contains all the rasas, the transcendental emotional tastes. And the idea is that one can have a relationship with God, the Supreme or the Absolute, in basically one of five different emotional flavors. And those are neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. This is a very elaborate and deep subject matter, which I'm not going to uh, attempt to go into here. We've touched on it a little bit in earlier videos, but without, a vid without an audience of people who are really into uh, devotional things, I'm not going to go uh, deep into the explanation because it would be a whole series in itself. But what I've done is included a link in the video description to the uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu part two, which goes into the description of the rasas in all detail, giving examples and so on. So if you really want to know about this, go click that link, download the book and study it. So uh, those are our notes or comments on the first chapter of Srimad Devi Bhagavatam. Jai Ma. Om Tat Sat.